All right, so I believe, we're going to get right to it. I believe that there's a foundation for everything. You know, we build on a strong foundation. And for mothers, the foundation for every mother is love. Say love. It has to be love. We come from a creator who is love, right? God is love. And when I think about the acronym of love and how a mother loves her children and she takes care of their needs, so I'm going to go and we're going to go down the word loves. Amen? All right, so let's start with the first one. L, lifestyle of prayer. You can't get away with it. Every time I come up here, you can't get around it. A mother needs a lifestyle of prayer. Prayer is the glue that keeps everything together. Prayer is the time, one-on-one -on -one time that you have with the Father, your creator, that's helping you through it all. So, like my husband said last week, most, prayer, uh, most Christians don't pray. It's maybe because they feel like, you know, I'm a Christian, God knows my heart, but your Father needs to hear from you. I tell my students all the time that do you walk, you get into the house and not say a word to your mother or your father? Do you go straight to your room and then when it's dinner time, you come down, you eat and not say a word? Throughout the whole day, you don't say anything to them and they're taking care of all your needs. And then you go to bed at night and like you just turn off your lights and you go to bed not saying one word. Does that happen? And they say, no. They're like shocked. I, I would never do that. Why not? Because I love my family and I love my parents and they're there for me and they're taking care of with me and I love to communicate with them. But we do that all the time as Christians. We forget who our creator is and how he's sustaining us and how he's building us and how he's providing for us and keeping us every step of the way. So it's very important to have a relationship with God like none other as a mother. Praying day in and day out. Have a lifestyle of prayer. Making it intentional to make it your business to pray, not only for yourself, for your strength, but for your children, for your family, for the desires that he placed into your heart. When I have moments sometimes where I'm, I'm up and then I'm just, you know, I get lazy with it, and we all get moments like that. But I definitely notice a difference when I do that. So putting God first lets you know, first of all, that you are not in control, that he's in control. It reminds us that through the ups and downs and the joys and the pain, we are not mothering and living this life alone. That he's walking with us. He provides us the Holy Spirit to keep us and to speak to us like little nuggets in our ears to help us deal with certain situations that surround us. And I'm often reminded that they're not mine, they're his. That's what prayer does. You know, when we are intentional, about prayer, it helps us to uh, be more appreciative of what we have. Because it's easy to complain, it's a lot of work. Mother, being a mother is hard work. It's the toughest job that you can have. And I've always wanted to be a mother, but I never understood how hard a mother does work, day in and day out. It is important to have daily alone time with our master, with our creator, our way maker, our provider, our sustainer. He knows the beginning from the end. I do not know the beginning from the end. The one who gives peace, joy, the one that is kind, loving, and forgiving, trustworthy, and faithful, and so much more. With that being said, when we pray, you start to get those attributes of God. We need those attributes of God to release it onto our children, no matter what age they are, because they have different stages in life and you'll always need those. So prayer is key, say key. We don't have a, a manual for mothers, right? You don't get an instruction manual and say, how do I do this and what if this happens? You just have to go with it and trust God. Your Bible, God is your manual pretty much. When I think of Eve, the first mother, she will oftentimes have the heaviest criticism for her failure in the garden. But I had to stop and think, um, how did Eve rise from that failure? You know, because mothering is not easy. 
Because her mistakes, now we are living with the consequences for generations after generations. And sometimes we will make mistakes that your child will have to live with that consequence and you will have to live with that consequence. But how do you get up from that? So sometimes I know a lot of times I find myself wishing I had a little time machine. Oh, I wish if there were, you know, if, let's go back in time. And I used to say that a lot. Like, I wish I could go back in time when DJ was a baby or when this happened or when I could have did this better. But there is no time machine. You know, God has a funny sense of humor. You know what he did once? I think I was like thinking and I was looking at baby pictures and I was like, oh, I wish I could go back and hold, hold little Desiree and Devin when they were little babies again. Because you miss certain stages when they grow up. So how about I had a dream one night that Desiree, I was holding Desiree and she was a baby. And then I was, I was walking with her. I was like, oh my gosh. I was nursing her and all what I normally would do. And then I woke up and I just had the biggest smile on my face and I knew that was just God. You know what, that's what God does. He loves you enough to say, look baby, you just have to, to deal with what happened and let's move forward. Because guess what? He even told me this. If I even granted you that wish to go back in time, you would have done it the same way. I'm like, you know what? You're probably right. Because I wasn't mature enough that time. I wasn't in a place spiritually to handle the situation another way. So instead of wishing that we can go back, because mistakes will happen and they'll continue to happen, let's make it a growth opportunity to see how we can make it better the next time. Let's lean on God and not on our flesh so that we can maybe do it right the next time. Amen? So that's why it's very important to pray. So the Holy Spirit will interact with me daily now. And when I have that prayer, you know, consistent prayer life, it, I see the difference. It's where I would have reacted one way before I reacted a totally different way. And it's not only important for me to pray, I have to make sure my children know how to pray. And I need to, we need to pray with our children. And when I noticed some things about uh, some of my children, that they complain a lot. And I was like, ooh, where did they get this complaining? Do I complain a lot? I just think back about myself. I was like, okay, instead of just saying stop complaining, what can you do? The Holy Spirit gave me a gratitude journal. So I bought a gratitude journal. So to come back all the complaining, every night they have to write something, only what you're grateful for. And you watch them grow and understand that we must be grateful and we must always rejoice in God. Not only about prayer, moms, take care of yourself. I want you to take care of yourself because you are modeling the way. Take care of yourself mentally if you need that. Emotionally, take care of yourself. Physically, when's the last time you had a doctor's checkup? When's the last time you know, what's your numbers? You need to know your health status because that's important for you to stay around as long as possible. And then not only know it, but act upon it. So the lifestyle that you create, the lifestyle of prayer, the lifestyle of being healthy is something that can be transferred into your children. Say lifestyle. So now we go to O, organize. How many of you are very organized? Just raise your hand, it's okay. It's an attribute, it's a skill, it's an ability that is given. So not everyone's organized and it's okay. So when I read Proverbs 24 verse 27, it says, put your outdoor work in order and get your fields ready. After that, build your house. So I think about build your house and I think about build your children and the environment that you're in. And you know the song, um, build your church, build your church. You don't know that song? Oh my, I thought you, okay. <laughs> but it's from um, Elevation Worship in Maverick City. They say, build your church, build your church, build it from the ground up, it's your church. If you know it, sing it. Build your church, build your church, build it from the ground up, it's your church. And then something goes on in my spirit and I said, build your child, build your child, build him from the ground up, he's your child. Build your child, build your child, build him from the ground up, 
she's your child. And I just started hearing that. And how, what am I doing to build them? What am I doing to grow them? And sometimes maybe I'm not spending enough time with them. And what can cause us not to spend time with those that we love is the chaos around us. Sometimes we need to take a look in our environment. Are we organized enough? You know when you're disorganized, it takes time away from the things that you need to do because you're constantly looking for things and you're constantly trying to find something. The mess can cause your house not to function as smooth as you want. So I thought organization is very important to have order. Everything that God did was in order. Before he created us, he made sure we had everything that we need. That's order. So in order for you to function properly and have that time that you really need with your children, order is very important. You know, children spell love, T-I-M-E, time. How are you spending your time? How am I spending my time? Am I spending it because I'm always trying to find or declutter? Sometimes it's something that we might need help with and we ask for help. Maybe there's someone you know that's very organized that can help you that's in your family. Maybe you have the, the funds to be able to pay someone to do that. Or maybe you just take step by step and try to clean out one room at a time. But if we take and be very intentional, it's not just um, quality time that they need, it's quantity time. It's more time. Quality time is sometimes it's just not enough, it's just not too often enough. But the quantity time is what spells love for them. Amen? So pray and ask God to help you examine your heart to see if you are holding on to things that you need to let go of that could be causing your time and taking away from your time. So the next one we have is V. Say value. So this is, I was reading a devotional, a mother's devotional one day, and... I really liked what it said. Um, it said, imagine you decide to start a new career as a gold miner. The first day on the job, you gather everything that you need, all your materials, and you head into the mines. You begin digging and digging and digging, and suddenly you find dirt, a lot of dirt. Say dirt. Imagine instead of digging some more, you run out of the cave and you go to the coworker and say, look, look, look. I found dirt, dirt is dirt. Now everybody would probably be looking at you like, okay, you're supposed to find dirt, right? Because underneath the dirt, you're looking for the what? The gold. I thought that was so good and I thought about this. Our children, just like you and I, have dirt. We were born sinners. And sometimes we focus so much on the dirt that's on them, we miss the opportunity to dig deeper for the gold. Can you see what God sees? We are all sinners. We don't deserve to be here. But can you see the gold within your child that you have to keep digging for? Sometimes we focus on the wrong that they did. We didn't take that opportunity to let them know that there's gold inside of them. You got to keep digging for that gold. And more, sometimes it'll be harder to do that than others. But know that God puts something special in your child, just like he did with you. And if we don't dig for that gold and be intentional and have that prayer life, we'll never find that gold. Or maybe we won't find it in time. So I love that analogy because if I would drop a piece of gum on the floor and get dirt on it, I would not pick that piece of gum up and start chewing it again. Most likely, right? Most people wouldn't do that. But if I dropped a $100 bill on the floor, would you just leave it alone and throw it away like you did the piece of gum? Absolutely not. You would take that $100 bill, you would clean it up gently, and then you'd put it away safe. That's what we need to do. We don't just say what you did, go to your room and shut the door and think about that. But how can you use that opportunity to try to dig for that um, gold? Well, how can we take that opportunity and say, you are valuable enough for me to stop, clean you off, gently speak to you in such a way that's going to help you. I love James. Oh, James chapter 1, verse 19 to 20. 
It says, my dear brothers and sisters, take, not, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Now this part, we missed this part, the next part. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. We are operating out of our flesh. It is not going to cultivate, it is not going to value, it is going to devalue. And we need to be very careful when we talk to precious children, even in their teenage years and young adults and adults, they still have that goal that we still need to dig and continue digging. So when we speak, we got to remember that our human anger will not produce the righteousness that God desires. I feel like that was good when I read that. I feel like don't, I don't want to devalue you when I speak. I want to build my child. I want to build them up, and I want to go for the gold. Say, go for the gold. Dig for the gold. And that's when I place value upon them. The next letter is E, embraces and encourages. You know the feeling when someone embraces you and encourages you, when things are not going as planned. Pull the gold out of them by doing this daily. No matter the age, your child can be embraced and encouraged in some or even many areas of their lives. Like 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 11 says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as, in fact, you are doing. When's the last time you told him I love you? Some, that's easy. Some, not so much. As a mother, you need to speak love and say I love you. It needs to come out, and your actions should match. Hug them often. That's gold. When you're hugging, the gold is rising to the surface. Kiss them often. That's gold. Pray with them daily. That's gold. When you pray with them daily, you take that time and you have to be intentional about it. I mean, I have to rework schedules and say, okay, we have to get upstairs by this time so that I can do individual time or maybe a group. But now that their, their ages are so, you know, DJ's 12 looking like he's 15, and I had to, you know, have God to help me with that and embrace, you know, his age even now and not try to go back in time. I need to have that one-on-one -on -one time with him because at his level, it's not going to be the same as Devin, who's five. So try to make it that intentional and encourage them and embrace them for where they are. Amen? And then the last one, S. God is good because that's what I was teaching my students uh, this week is stewardship. And for S is stewards. Colossians 3 verse 23 verse tw through 24 it says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Even though sometimes when they're little they think that they're the master. Yeah, not for them. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. So the 365 days a year, the countless hours that you're putting in, you are not just serving them, you are serving the Lord. You are taking the time to show your love. You are taking, even though it's hard, I know there's some times that you want to just get away from it all. I would be lying if I said there's not times that I just want to get away from everybody. But you know what? I have to go back and think it's not them that I'm serving. Even though they might be rude sometimes, it's not them that I'm serving. It is the Lord Christ that I'm serving. How am I serving them? I am digging that gold. I am digging for gold and pulling out that gold in the name of Jesus. So I had to make sure to know that my children, in a sense, are my products. And I need to make sure that I'm stewarding them correctly. That I am using my time, my abilities, and my possession to take care of them. To be responsible for them. Because I will get an account from God 
how did you steward the ones that I gave you? How did you lead them to me? How did you direct them? How did you correct them? So it isn't them that you are serving when you cook for them and you clean up after them and when you give them money and when you give them advice and when you try to fulfill their desires. It is the Lord you are serving. You are to be a good steward of your children in our time, in our love, in our speech, in our abilities and dedication. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 2 says, Now it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. They're not yours, they're his. How are you going to be proven faithful with what he's given them? And that's everyday walk, and that's an everyday challenge. So in closing, your children may have fallen by the wayside or may have maybe heading that direction if they're of age and it's very tough. And whatever you poured into them and you taught them is not sinking in or it seems that way. Continue to trust in the Lord that he has the ability to save. Because remember that you're, you are not going to be in control of everything. He's in control. You have to learn to release them unto him because ultimately he's all knowing, he's all seeing, he's all powerful. I'm not. So when I do my part as a mother and love them as the best of my ability, I have to allow God to take care of the rest. He, they are ultimately his. Just keep on praying and pushing for your children as they grow to discover life on their own. So remember, L, lifestyle and prayer. Say lifestyle. As you spend time with God, pray for each of them individually. Call out each of their names out. What you see in them, their personalities, the dirt that you might see that you want to go over, you know, try to go through and find that gold. We need to just know that it will be difficult, but know that God got you. And then we have O, say organize. I have to put an effort to keep an orderly and organized life to get, the, to, get to spend the quantity time with each child as when I am imparting God's word in them, they would want to listen, right? We can't expect them to listen to us if we're not even going to put the time in. So when we put that quantity time, they will want to listen to us when we're teaching them when we're trying to impart God's word in them. But if I'm constantly telling you what you're doing wrong, they're not gonna wanna hear about God's word when it's coming from me. So that quantity time is very important. V, values, say values. See the gold in each child as you correct and discipline them. Don't get heated in the moment and forget all about adding value to their lives. We need to add value every chance we get. As it said in James, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Let's think about digging for gold. Let's say dig. And then we have embracing and encouraging. To be intentional about each day, saying I love you. You can't say it too much. I don't, want, I don't like it when people say, well, it's cliche, I say it too much. They need to hear it every time. You never know when's the last time you'll get to say I love you. You'll never know when is the last time you'll get to hug them. You encourage them. Take every opportunity to let them know that you're there for them. And then we have S for stewardship. Stewardship. Are you supposed to repeat after me? Say stewardship. <laughs> there you go. And I love that definition for stewardship. It says... The responsible overseeing and protection of something considered worth caring for and preserving. Wow, let me read that again. The responsible overseeing and protection of something considered worth caring for and preserving. Amen. That's just gold right there. 
And when you think of that definition, that's gold. I just want to keep on digging. Oh, you're having a bad attitude today? Let me help you today. Let's find something to have, be grateful about. I'm digging for gold. You're having a bad time? You're fighting with your brother and sister? Let me find a harmony jar. Let's find something that y'all guys can do together. I'm digging for gold. Let's dig. You can be a gold digger. This one's okay. We're going to be a gold digger for our children. This is the type of gold digger that you want to be, right? You want to dig for that gold. You want to find that treasure that's within them. We want to let them know that they're fearfully and wonderfully made. We want to let them know that God's work is wonderful. And I want them to know that full well. I want them to know that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So when we're digging for gold, you can say scripture to them. You can let them know who they are and whose they are. So no weapons formed against you shall prosper because you are God's child. So let's dig for gold every chance that we get. Oh, this scripture sums everything up. I love 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 through 8. Because it really just sums everything up as a mother. And we know that's all about love. And it says, if I speak in the tongue of men or of angels... But do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clinging cymbal. That's going back to James. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have the faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. This is love. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. That's why tears was welling up on some of your eyes when you're watching the video and they're saying, I love my mom. Because they had that, that love that foundation that all mothers normally have. Now we know there's some times that we don't grow up in that household where there's that mother that's there. So for those of you who may not have a good relationship with your mother, I pray that God embraces you and encourages you. I pray that God will give you that opportunity to want to forgive and to forgive. Because when you forgive, that releases you. That helps you to become all that you need to be. And maybe not follow the same mistakes that happened to you. And I do understand that this day is pretty difficult for some who may have lost a child or may have had an abortion or something tragic happened. I pray the same, that God embraces you and encourages you and helps you through. And I do understand that some sons and daughters right now are wishing that their mother was still here. Maybe they gone too soon. I pray that God embraces you and encourages you and give you the strength to continue on. I know this hard for some who wants to be a mother, but something is preventing it. I pray that you are encouraged and know that you are loved, and there's nothing wrong with you. I pray that God encourages you and embraces you. So I just want to pray, and I just want to thank God for all the hard work these wonderful mothers that are here have done. Father, I just thank you, Lord. I give you this moment, I give you this time, I want to say how great you are. There is no one like you. 
you give us the strength to carry on. You tell us to put our head up high and we can do it. Father, you are our hope. Thank you for being patient. Thank you for being kind. Thank you for being everything. Without you, Lord, we're nothing. You're the perfect example of love. And because I can see your love in that moment where you sent your son to die on the cross for us, we can now follow in that footstep and love like you love. Help us each and every step of the way, Lord. When we get tired and fatigued, when there's more work to be done than time, help us to stop and lean on you. Help us to rest upon your shoulders. Let us not try to figure it out with our own ability, Lord. Let us rely on you. You are a good father. You are ever-present help when trouble comes. So, Father, we lean on you, and we give you thanks. So, Father, I pray for these wonderful women. I pray for these mothers, Lord, that you continue to carry them. I pray for relationships will be mended, Lord. I pray, Father God, that you'll give them a greater sense to want to just serve with all their hearts as unto the Lord. Help them to remember that it is you, Christ, that they are serving when they're working tirelessly. So, Lord, I just pray for those, Lord, who are hurting and pain on this day, that please, Father, cover them. Put your loving arms around them. Embrace them, Father. Speak to them, Lord. We know that you are the comforter like none other. So, God, we give you this moment. We give you this time. I thank you for using me as a vessel to speak your word. You are a good father. And I thank you, Father. And that is in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.